There's one example we've been discussing recently on a Facebook Nibiru debunking pages. It's of a lady who seems to be a legitimate particle theorist with a doctorate, but if so, she doesn't seem to know the first thing about astronomy, saying absurd things about brown dwarfs. Anyhow, whoever she is, she says that white dwarf stars, eventual end state of a star like our sun, billions of years into the future, eventually turns into brown dwarf stars, a category of star she has made up herself, consisting of a white dwarf star obscured by gas and dust, then into brown dwarfs proper. She claims that brown dwarfs have a dense, solid core like a white dwarf surrounded by gas and dust, so presumably electron degenerate matter without atoms or molecules as we understand them. This is a very eccentric theory, as white dwarfs have a mass similar to that of the sun, forming at a late stage. All the evidence points to brown dwarfs being failed stars, large planets similar to Jupiter, but more massive but not nearly as massive as even the smallest proper star. A brown dwarf, by definition, didn't have enough mass to ignite hydrogen burning as a normal star, but may have some deuterium fusion at an early stage until it spluttered out, which is how it got warm enough to be spotted in infrared. Even more absurdly though, she says that our solar system has numerous brown dwarfs in it and because they are warm and most easily detected in the infrared, therefore they are invisible. This is nonsense. Since when did a warming something up make it invisible? The coldest, darkest brown dwarf known at the distance of Jupiter would be as bright as Betelgeuse, the bright reddish star in the shoulder of Orion. That's because, being invisible, it would shine by reflected light. The moon is made of dark rock, as dark as worn asphalt, but is of course easily visible in our night sky. So something being dark in colour doesn't make it invisible either. It's embarrassingly bad science. Her ideas just make no sense at all. And I find it hard to credit that someone so qualified could come to believe such things. If she is indeed the same person as that professor, perhaps it is an example of how over specialisation can lead academics sometimes to have a very narrow range of knowledge, mainly limited to their particular field of expertise. Her speculations in this area, of course, are not peer reviewed and haven't been submitted to scientific journals. Yet she gives YouTube video presentations in which she claims that her ideas are correct. Could be an eccentric physicist crank, as you do get such sometimes, speculating beyond their sphere of expertise and then coming to believe those speculations as the truth. Or, it could be someone else impersonating a genuine physicist who has nothing to do with these.